Hashtag Revolution Now protests may have ended, but Omoyele Showere stays with the Department of State Services. And his stay is not ending any time quickly because a federal high court in Abuja has granted the Department of State Services permission to detain the publisher of Sahara Reporters for 45 more days. Now, the question is, what happens now? Will he be charged to court? Why keep him a little longer? What are you really investigating? Well, more questions and more questions. I still have in, my, in the studio my guest, Shagun Shopita, uh, political analyst, and Michelle Agatise, both uh, uh, here in the studio. L let's, let me start with you, Shagun, <laughs> again. <laughs> As a civil rights activist, and before uh, the Sahara reporters um, um, guy became a presidential aspirant. He was also one of those guys who spoke up all the time about issues, even though a lot of people didn't like him, but he fell in that category. And again, the, with revolution now, even though the DSS and the federal government has a problem with the word revolution, it was the underlining thing was good governance. If Nigerians were asking for good governance and we did not, we were not strong enough to speak up and somebody spearheaded it and now he's sitting somewhere, my question is, do we stop asking, where are the other people who are supposed to be protesting? Yeah. Even if it means changing the name, where are we? Uh, did we really ask for good governance? Were we really ready to ask for good governance, looking at all of this? Because everywhere has gone cold. Yeah, I mean, look... Um the, the task of taking on a government is not an easy task because you are taking on an opponent, let me use that word, who is massively resourced. They've got the machinery of state to deal with anything they perceive, you know, to do whatever they want to do with anybody within the ambit of the law, right? So it's always never going to be easy and that precisely is why you've got to be smart about how you go about your agitation for good governance. Should we stop asking? Of course not. Um, have we how been many, asking? How many? We have been, but we've not been asking enough. The few times now, is it, the question is, how do you ask for good governance? Um, is it only by protests? Because regardless of what the government is trying to say or do and trump up you know, the issues around the world revolution. The reality is that all Shawere wanted to do was lead a protest, right? So the question is, is that the only way to ask for good governance? No. Um, is that a way to ask for good governance? Is that a good way? Absolutely. Is it a necessary way? Yes. We must not stop protesting. Um, they cannot arrest all of us. We but should... But the question is, where is everybody? They're there, but you <laughs> where know... Where are they? They're there. Um, to, like I said, I, I don't see nobody. They're there to organize a protest. Is not um, to use the local parlance. Moi, moi. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. It, it's a lot of logistic work. It's a lot of connecting, networking across several levels. It took vertically, one man. Horizontally. And I, and, and I it didn't take it took one, one man. man to start the Arab Spring. One oh, man that, set himself yeah, on that, fire. That, that was a revolution. It, I, I'm just saying. No, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> and I'm not saying go set yourself on fire. Yeah, please. exactly. I'm just saying we in Nigeria always want, let me say it like two faced. We all, all want to go to heaven, mm. but nobody, nobody wants, wants to, to die. die. We all are asking for a hero, but nobody wants to be yes. the hero. Yes. So we are waiting for somebody yes. to band behind. So I'm going to ask you, yes. aside from a show array revolution now, yes. did we have to wait for a revolution yes. now? Because I know that that has been taken over by events. Yes. Are you, are you sure that as a Nigerian, Nigerians are really ready for good governance? Or Because, this is why I'm asking, there are people who have pitched their tents. If it's a certain party that is in government, no matter what they do, they can do no wrong. And so we have taken, we've been divided along those party lines. There's ethnicity also, yes. you know, in the horizon. Mm. We have all of the, so are we really ready? Are we at that point where we can really say enough is enough? Or yes. we just wait for somebody to do something and then we band behind or yes. go on Twitter and Twitter bounces. Yes. Yes. Have we really come of age yes. to get good governance? Well, um, and, and before I answer the question, it's funny you should talk about Two-Face because I remember there was one time that he asked all of us to come out and protest and yeah. he didn't Not show. Not too long ago. But oh, <laughs> come on, he was invited. Well, he was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The rest, yeah. So the rest but, but, is but that being said, uh, I think Nigerians as a people, we want good governance. 
Um, the question is, how do we get good governance? Um, one thing that arose from all of this was that Shori ran for the last elections. Um, Mogalu ran for the last elections. We had a young crop of people that ran for the next elections. How did they perform? Not very well. Um, so the question really is, even amongst those people, they, they band together and say that we want to be the alternative for good governance. Because no matter what you say, um, voting in the establishment over and over again, you're never going to get any better results from doing that. So that's the first thing. Because when we go out to protest, we need to ask ourselves, what's going to be the results of this protest. You know, we talk about the Arab Spring, but do we want to be in the position that those countries are at the moment? Do we even need to go that far when we still have the ballot boxes? We're not serious at the ballot boxes. A lot of us don't go out to vote. A lot of us don't even go out to campaign and tell people that these are the type of people you should vote for. If we're serious, we'll be going into the villages, the hinterlands, telling people, come on, like when people were campaigning in the 70s, like they didn't have Twitter, they didn't have Facebook. So that's one bucket to look at it from. Now, the second second bucket to look at it from is the fact that what is problematic about this current trend is the fact that it appears that if you speak out against the gov government, if you speak out against policies, there's no room for debate. And once you take away room for debate, then you're paying lip service to democracy because you have to allow that room for debate. At the end of the day, there's always going to be two sides because at the end of the day, Trump is not everyone's favorite president, mm -hmm. but he's the president, right? And there's that room for debate. People are able to criticize him. Just turn on your CNN. But should we be scared to criticize our president? Should we be scared to criticize our legislative arm? Those are the questions. Now, the third aspect of it, you know, about this detention for 45 more days is the fact that um, if you read that provision in the Terrorism Prevention Act, first of all, they brought it under the Terrorism Prevention, Prevention Act, Act yes. having told us last week that this was about treasonable felony for the use of the word revolution. revolution. So first of all, there's that dichotomy that's posing questions for Nigerians. Is this true? Is this not true? Is this just trumped up? Is this not trumped up? The second thing is that that provision allows you to detain in order to investigate. So don't worry, detain him. Let's wait. Let's hear what they're going to say are the charges. The, prosecu against the prosecutor is saying he wants to investigate. Yes, yes. But the, the moment you take so somebody for into custody, yeah, so when you yeah. take somebody in, into custody, should you not have enough? I mean, you're yes. a lawyer, you should know yes. better. Yes. Should you not have enough evidence to present for holding the person? Yes. Well, at the point of arresting, you know, it's about an imminent threat or something along those lines. Now, for investigation, for what you need to you know, have him convicted. It's a different ball game, right? But the, the, the point is that, and this is why a lot of us are losing faith, and this is why you have very high ranking Nigerians, Walisha and Kaz of this world, Falanas of this world speaking out, is that there's no transparency here. You know, we've had instances where people have been in DSS custody since 2015, and we've not seen any charges against them. We've had instances where trials have not materialized, even though you've had them forever to investigate. So we don't want that kind of situation. And, and this issue of ex parte yes, yes. decisions, or yes. what's that about? Because there should yes. be the fair hearing for the other yes. person. Yes, but with ex parte applications, um, they are created by law. Um, even that provision that they came in allows you to bring an ex parte application, especially because you're just saying to the court that, look, I just need more time to do further investigations. Now, for Shawari, the thing is that when you have an ex parte order of such, um, his counsel can come to court with an application to set aside that order, maybe saying that um, the persecution um, suppressed some fact, failed to disclose, um, maybe misled the court in its affidavit or things of that nature, or just saying that, look, there's nothing here and this is being used oppressively. It's not the final order and it's not something that can keep you in court indefinitely. If you know, um, the SSS came to the court asking for 90 days, and the court said, you know, you have 45 days. And if you want to extend this, you have to justify that extension. Mm. So um, why I say that we have to wait is that um, despite the fact that we've lost trust in our security services, um, we also have to understand that these guys are availed of more information than we are. Right? Um, in a normal working society, you might think that indeed there's something there. Um, despite the fact that I do not want to give them that benefit of the doubt, um, it's better to just wait. Let them have their 45 days if there's no application to set aside, even though I would urge for such an application to be made, even if not for anything, at least to make a statement. Um, then let's see what they bring up. 
if there is nothing at the end of the day, then I think it will be more of an own goal for this government because what you're showing, therefore, is that everything was trumped up. But if at the end of the day there is evidence, you know, showing that, look, there was some sinister motive, despite the fact that I do not see that happening now. But if that indeed happens, then we might just see that this becomes something by which the government then says that, look, I told you so, I told you that there was something here, and you guys should have trusted in us. But okay. let's wait and see. Uh, but he has a Femi Fallon as his yep. attorney. And... Um, and we all know how Femi Falado seems to be caught in, up in all of this. He's for Elsa exactly, and now for a show <laughs> uh, This is really interesting. But do you think that this situation is going to put a dampener on Nigerians ever wanting to speak up? Because he made a point saying, should we be worried every time we want to speak up or criticize the government of the day? No, not necessarily. I, I think the issue, and we, we mustn't forget this, um, much as we would like to... Um, I, for one, personally, would like to stay on the side of um, a fundamental rights of a citizen to say his mind about how his life is being run by his government. We have to remember and temper that with some sense of responsibility on the part of the people agitating. Mm -hmm. So your agitation has got to be tempered mm -hmm. because we're in a civilized society. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is a code of behavior, of, you know, of good behavior in normal societies. So. You can't set out from day one. Uh, Marianne, I don't know if you've seen those videos. I was disturbed that a person who is purporting to want to lead a protest, I've been part of several protests. You can't come out and say things that would allude or imply that your intention, mm -hmm. your end game, is a change of government mm -hmm. from any means other than as provided by the Constitution. Mm -hmm. So when somebody comes out and says, on recording, that by Tuesday there will be no DSS. You, mm. you just played into their hands. Mm. You didn't need to say that, you know. Um, so, so I think we've got to temper what's happening with that. Mm. Um, so if I wanted to, you know, protest today, I'm not going to give government a reason to pick me up. Mm -hmm. There are so many ways that I can, I'll, I'll make good trouble, mm -hmm. but you can't arrest me. Mm -hmm. We will not, look. So you would do it within the ambit I mean, of the say, law. Can't you go out... Um, Look, what, look at what they're doing in Hong Kong and other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, it gets a bit testy sometimes, mm -hmm. but all they want to do is go out there and sit down. So go out to the National Assembly and sit at the gates and say, we're not going out. We're not, we're not leaving. Don't block the road, though. Just sit at the gate and be there for two weeks. The world will notice you and something will give. So there are so many ways to agitate. You don't have to take on the might of the state with, with grand, um, grand standing and um, large words that you can't back up in mm. reality. So I think Shore erred in that regard. Mm. But having said that, he's still got a fundamental right. And we all know that really, well, do we know? We'll wait and see. <laughs> 45 days. <laughs> we'll wait and see in 45, 45 days. Whether, days. But, but I think it's okay. also important to say that on the ex parte issue, he was represented in court yesterday by Femi Falano and mm -hmm. a couple of other lawyers. And they have said immediately they're going to challenge this order, okay. you, know, um, you know, granted to keep him for 45 days. They, they don't believe in it. Okay. Uh, Shegu Shopito, uh, Michelle, I got to say thank you very much, gentlemen. It's been an interesting one. Uh, we'll take a short break and bring you some social media comments on, and more opinions of Nigerians concerning the Nigerian army versus the police saga. And when we come back, I'll be giving you my take. Stay with us.
Well, it's time for my take. I'm just, there are just too many, too many things to talk about, but on the issue of the police and the army, like I said earlier on on the show, I'm not going to take sides or speak for anyone. It just goes to show that we have no synergy within our security agencies. There is no communication. There is no information. I mean, there's supposed to be intel. I, I'm not even a, a security appraiser, but I know that there's such a thing as intel that should be shared, especially on an issue such as kidnapping or a kidnap kingpin. And Nigerians, some Nigerians, I won't say all Nigerians, are making fun of the police today because they started a hashtag showing how they are normal and mere human beings just like we are. But if we didn't have a rot in the system, Nigerians would not be making fun of the police. They probably would be supporting them and asking or calling for the heads of the people who killed them. Here's my point. If we must have a great Nigeria, a good Nigeria, a Nigeria that will be respected in the Committee of States, we need to start by fixing everything we need to be, to get a, a structure of sorts, because it's like we're just, you know, out of, we're out of place as a country, unfortunately. Our security operatives are not working the way they should work. I know that their place is also full, but we need to have, from the down up, a proper structure built. Let's be organized as a country. And that goes ditto for every other part of this country, whether it's the economy, whether it's the government, the, law, the lawmakers, every single person and moving on to the issue of showery we have our fingers crossed we, we we can't really say anything can we but this should not put a dampener on the fact that we should ask for good governance you have a right to ask for good governance no, let's not wait for somebody to say hey let's go and protest we have representatives let's ask questions if things are not going right petition them it is your right do not wait for one man to help you go get good governance. It is your right. It's a democracy. And as a citizen of this country or any other country in the world, you have a right to either criticize constructively or ask questions or even demand for the dividends of democracy. And that's my take. Uh, well, I'll see you on Monday. It's been an interesting week. Let's see what the weekend holds. And I'll be back here on Monday. I'm Mary Annicole.